There are many choices for fax for IP and it can be a little complicated to figure out which is the best one for your particular deployment. First we'll need to review what exactly is fax over IP. When faxes are sent, they're sent over standard copper lines. Basically, they are fax tones that are sent across. The way these tones work, they are received in a traditional fax system into a fax board. The board hears these tones and then translates those into electrical current into the fax server itself, usually right through a PCI slot it's plugged into. With fax over IP, these tones are brought into an IP-enabled gateway, and then somehow this electrical current needs to be processed and sent over the network itself which is a little more complicated since it's not directly plugged into the server. The main issues that really can come into play are really between the fax server and the IP-enabled equipment and how this information is handled and processed. This is compounded if this IP-enabled equipment is off-site and off-location somewhere else. So what are the choices of fax over IP? There are two major schools involved. There is real-time fax, which basically means as I'm sending, you are receiving, and then one called store and forward. This is more like email. As you send up to a server, it stores there and then eventually sends. Under those, we'll see the different types of fax for IP that pop out. The real-time side, we'll see two major schools that come involved, fax pass-through and fax relay. On the store and forward side, we see T37. T37 is really just like an email and really should not be used for enterprise environments. Under Fax Relay, there are two other types of protocols that come into play. There's a proprietary version called Cisco Fax Relay, which is only working with Cisco gateways. And then there's the industry standard T38 Fax Relay. Really, we'll need to look at the two real-time Fax over IP solutions that could be used and which was the best one for your particular environment. There's really two major ones involved. Fax Pass-Through, sometimes referred to as G711 Pass-Through or Voice Band Data and T38 fax relay. This is the de facto industry standard. But why is it the de facto? First we'll need to take a closer look at fax pass-through in order to understand why T38 fax relay is the recommended version to use instead. Fax pass-through is very similar to a voice over IP call where basically the audio content that's brought across is captured and sampled and recorded in something called a real-time protocol that real-time protocol is sent in packets over an IP network. We'll need to get an idea of what voice codecs are, why fax pass-through uses G711 as its preferred codec, and how G711 gets packetized. In the world of voice codecs, there's a lot of options that are available. A lot of these are really designed and kind of customized for the human voice and how that works. The one that FAX uses is G711. This is called postcode modulation. Basically, we're looking at 64 kilobits per second on each channel of the FAX. This is the one preferred because it is an uncompressed codec that has not had any special conditioning applied, as with most other voice codecs. How postcode modulation works is pretty simple, really. The human voice is capable of basically speaking from 300 to 3400 hertz, and capable of hearing from 20 to 20,000 hertz. As a result, for best fidelity, we usually measure things at 8,000 hertz. Hertz simply meaning samples per second, so how many times we're going to measure within one second. If we were to send a fax tone across here, and we can see how this is broken up into one second intervals. Here we see only 8 hertz are involved, basically 8 samples of units of time that are involved. Each of the little dots that are captured are then translated into a hexadecimal number. If I only had eight samples in that line, and I try to rebuild that, I'll see it's definitely not going to play back exactly the way it's expected. That hexadecimal number really translates to ones and zeros, and those ones and zeros simply state voltage or not voltage, plus or minus and voltage. All that voltage information is then captured into an audio stream called RTP, or Real-Time Protocol. In a fax pass-through environment, the fax tones are brought into the IP gateway itself. The IP gateway does no attempt to translate or understand these tones and simply passes them through, kind of like in a window. See in this message we see, how are you? 
Simply this will be broken up and sampled and recorded and sent across in RTP packets. Where issues can come in the line is if we have issues like delay or latency. This effectively would be playing back the audio tones with weird delays and stalls within it. In a human conversation, this would be something you can probably adapt for. In a fax conversation, this would be pretty unacceptable. Another concern that comes involved is packet loss, where we might lose some part of the conversation itself. Fairly simple, this would be certain audio tones that are completely missing within the call. Certainly this would cause high transmission errors. And the third common scenario to look for is excessive jitter. Jitter refers to the time frame between the packets and their expectation of showing up. Excessive jitter means they're overlapping or going on top of each other, not coming as expected. To function and work with jitter, IP gateways use something called a jitter buffer, where they capture the amount of data in and they capture a certain amount before they release the actual audio call. If they get too much faster than they can handle, or too little, they'll end up sending kind of a jarbled amount of information across. Effectively, fax pass-through has these major issues of delay, latency, packet loss, and excessive jitter, and this is heavily compounded working when your IP-enabled equipment is across off of your network, such as in a SIP trunk. In a SIM trunk environment, the IP-enabled equipment is actually provided by a provider, which is off of your network, meaning all these types of network-related issues are compounded and a higher chance of happening. So with fax pass-through, we have a couple major issues of concern. First of all, pass-through was not created with fax in mind. It was created with just basic voice in mind. Network issues can heavily impact RTP packets and will result in high transmission failure rates. And SIP trunks add an additional layer of complexity due to traffic being over a WAN. So what is the solution for your fax in an enterprise environment? The best option is T38 Fax Relay. With T38 Fax Relay, unlike Fax Pastor, T38 was created specifically for faxing over a network. So a T38 device can actually speak fax. Fax referred to in most contexts as T.30. Instead of using full RTP tones, they'll use HDLC frames, which is more like a written message versus an audio sample. Smaller in size, easier to send, and easier to repeat and there's built-in redundancy features in T38 itself. The way the frames work, we capture that same type of information on hexadecimal and they put it in HDLC frame and sends it across that way. This is a lot smaller because they're not looking at the entire sample audio going across. When T38 receives something in, it doesn't pass it through like the other one, like a window sending it through. It simply relays the information. In this case, we would see fax tones come across to an IP-enabled equipment, and it would simply relay the information to the fax server, not complete samples of audio sent across the line, but simple HDLC frames that explain exactly what the conversation was saying and what the tones were supposed to be sounding like. This makes it a lot easier, and it's very easy to repeat those packets that they're lost. RTP is still used at some degree within T38, but only for the initial tones of the faxes. T38 uses a couple different types of frame types you can see how to identify. There's an indicator and data. These are both broken up. You can see all this within the calls themselves. Here's a simple trace capture. You can see the outputs coming in. Down there we see indicators and we see data frames. This information can be repeated very easy, not like an audio sample to RTP. If we lose parts of the audio sample, they're gone. This information can be repeated very simply. So why is T38 the de facto for fax of IP in an enterprise environment? The fax tones are translated into HTLC frames instead of being captured into full audio codec recordings. This means you have a lot less issues in case of jitter, packet loss, and delay. You could still encounter these things, but because they're packets, instead of full audio recordings, they can be resent very easily. T38 was specifically designed for faxing. 
meaning the fax devices themselves actually speak fax and have a much better chance of working in this environment. NT38 has some built-in redundancy options, allowing it to resend parts of the conversation with every packet it sends. Very important with the SIP trunk environment, many SIP trunk solutions were not implemented with fax in mind and it can result with a very few vendors actually supporting T38 fax relay. The most important part to take away from all of this is, is fax pass-through as the only option means you are more likely to be getting some heavy transmission errors. So when given a choice, make sure you push for T38 fax relay as your choice for fax IP in the enterprise environment.